Hey everybody, it's B, and welcome back to my channel. It's been about three months since I've uploaded my last video, and so many things have happened since then, and I figured I would just like share that with you guys and sort of get you all up to date on where I've been, why I was gone, um, I started testosterone and the effects that that has had on myself and my life, um, most of which have been incredibly positive. Um, and I just, you know, as you can see, I'm shooting in a new location. All of this and more coming to you an update in this video today. So, welcome home, Jackalope Tribe. Let's get started. Where have I been? It's been three whole months. I have been mostly in Vegas. So last we left off, I was actually in Hawaii shooting content for Vlogmas when my camera crapped out, my SD card fried, and just the all of the technical problems that you can imagine all happened at once while I was traveling. So I do have some footage that I was able to salvage from that trip. It will be me one month on T. So you'll be able to see a more accurate comparison of where I was versus where I am today. And so that'll be awesome. When that happened, I ended up having to send my camera to get fixed. And I kind of shied away from using my equipment for a while because I was concerned that I was just breaking things and I wanted to make sure everything was good to go because AVN was happening in January. So AVN was spectacular. I shot content with some amazing models. I managed to actually be a part of an orgy, which is something I've always wanted to be a part of. It was on my bucket list, so I got to actually do that with some fantastic creators, uh, including Wolf Hudson and Dakota Marie Mar and just countless others. I got to meet a really cool camera guy with and like learn about like his camera equipment and what lighting he uses and what he uses to edit. It was spectacular, fantastic. And uh, so, and I got to just work with some like amazing creators. As you guys are aware, in June of last year, I actually got divorced from my ex-husband. I think I made a video about it. It was amicable, we're still friends, it's all good. But I kind of had like hit a point in June and throughout that summer where I was having a really hard time being able to even like leave the house. It was super high anxiety and was having a really hard time functioning as a human being. So my trip to Hawaii was a spur of the moment decision to fix that. I initially was actually headed out to Ohio, ooh, Ohio, to visit my friend Bianca Carlisle and my other friend Ivy Fleur. The flight got canceled last minute, so I didn't really have anything to do. My brother offered to pay for my flight out to Hawaii to visit him so I could do the thing that I wanted to do, which was force myself out of the house and relearn and re-experience uh, life solo again, and it was fantastic, it was wonderful, it was a great experience, and since then, it's kind of just been a huge upturn for me personally as a human being. I've relearned how to foster connections with people and have like real friendships. I've been able to prioritize my life over my job in that like my happiness is super important and being sure to take care of myself and actually do the self-care that I was preaching about on my channel but not actively taking part in for myself. And I've also started looking to see some more spiritual pursuits. So I've started that journey, sort of rediscovering myself. I've been able to actually confidently start looking into what path I want to follow and, and what I would like to practice, and it's it's been phenomenal. So I made a post about this on Twitter. I may have taken it down since, but I have a god sister and a godson, and if you guys want to help them out Right now they're going through a super hard time. January I started helping them with some of what they're going through. So that kind of, that whole upheaval happened around the same time as AVN and it's kind of just been like a non-stop and I've, I've only just now finally got everything in the space where I am currently living and plan to live for a very long time and have finally actually managed to set up a space for filming my work content as well as my YouTube content and set up a, a schedule where I'm actually able to start editing content on my computer, which is 
out in the common area. We do live with a minor, so uh, in order for me to do my job, she actually needs to be out of the house, which is totally acceptable. It's actually requiring me to have more of a work-life balance, which is spectacular. And then we had the Nevada shutdown due to COVID-19, which I think took many of us by surprise. I know a lot of people were heralding it as a super dangerous thing and nobody seemed to listen. I, being a germaphobe and previously agoraphobic and uh, having a mild obsessive compulsive fear of contamination, am afraid of any pandemic happening, so I figured I was overreacting and chose to ignore my anxiety and my paranoia about what I thought was going to happen. Turns out my anxiety was right this time. Um, so I have only just finally sort of accepted what has been happening and recently sort of come to grips with the fact that yes, this is a, a real pandemic, people really are suffering, and I was right, but that doesn't mean that I need to listen to my anxiety all the time. And that anxiety exists for a reason. Uh, your fear response is there to warn you when something is dangerous. When you're a person who has like generalized anxiety, you have to learn how to turn off your listening to that. Now I'm working on acknowledging that, yes, my fear was correct, however, um, that doesn't mean that it is inherently dangerous to go outside. I can still be outside in the fresh air and not be too heavily concerned about risk of contamination. And so that's kind of where I've been at and I, I wanted to, I've been wanting to make a video actually for several months but just not really found the right headspace to do it. But now I'm in the right headspace, I've been in the right headspace for a couple of days now. I've been feeling really really good about this video. I've kind of actually planned it out, I've got like a semblance of a script, which is not something I ever used to do, but I'm, I'm pleased with it so far. I'm still doing school, which is awesome. So when we last left off, I actually was planning on doing a secret transition series where I actually wasn't going to be out about having started tea and was going to be cataloging my experience and then I was going to actually do a mass release of 100 videos for 100 days. I still want to try to do something similar, but instead I'm actually going to release those videos this month. Um, I wasn't consistently filming for all of the reasons that I just previously listed, so instead I'm actually going to be starting that series, but something similar, not exact, this month, where I try to upload a video every week, cataloging the changes that I've experienced, and because I haven't been recording those things, I actually made a list of some of the stuff that's different for me that I want to share with you guys. So the, the very first thing that I noticed actually after doing my first shot of testosterone, and this is still pretty consistent for me, is I actually am very, very fatigued for the first day or two after testosterone. For the first two shots, it was three days of needing to sleep and just not really being able to get up out of bed. I think it was because my body was preparing for growth and change because that's what that hormone signaled to my body. I know other people, when they do their tea shot, they get this burst of energy and that just is the opposite for me. So I do end up usually sleeping for 12 to 16 hours after I've done my shot. My doctor, by the way, his name is Raj Singh and he's phenomenal. He has his own YouTube channel as well, and he's, he's my primary care physician, but he also um, does other things, not just hormones. He does all of the things. It's really cool. He's an awesome guy. Um, I'll go ahead and put a link to his YouTube channel here as well, so you guys can go ahead and follow him for those of you who live in Vegas and are looking for a doctor who will actually listen to you and knows what the heck he's talking about when it comes to hormones. So that was the very first thing I noticed. The second thing that I noticed, and is still consistent again after I do my shot, is bottom growth. So the first probably six weeks <clears throat> of being on tea, I was like insatiably horny. What I did experience, and I still do experience for the first day or two after my shot, is a growth, tingling, um, stretching sensation in the bottom area. Um, and that, that's that been consistent. I know that a lot of people uh, say that your growth stops after the first six months. Other people say that it continues for two to three years. There are also creams that you can get if you're worried about not having enough growth, especially if you wanted to do metoidioplasty. 
So those are all things that I have heard about and learned about in my personal experience. I'm, I'm leading up to month five and that is still something that I consistently experience, which is really cool. Um, I, I don't know, really, I didn't look at how small I was before, but I do know that it's very different now. And that's, and I haven't measured because I feel like that's just a weird thing to measure, but yes. So, bottom growth, absolutely. My voice didn't really start to drop until about two months on T. Um, I did get some sort of scratchy and hoarseness, and, and I still actually experience sort of a sore throat on occasion. Um, my voice is still dropping, and I've noticed it because when I sing, I have to sing very differently than I used to. I'm, I'm, I'm by no means actually decent at singing. I just enjoy belting out a few tunes from time to time, especially when I'm driving or in the car, and I noticed about a month and a half in that I couldn't hit high notes anymore and then my vocal range was very limited for a significant amount of time. I actually am able to sing now um, without worrying about losing my voice, which is really nice, but there are still notes that I can't hit on both ends of the spectrum. I think I've not quite settled yet in where my voice is meant to be, but it's it's been really cool to hear the difference. Like I have old videos that I listen to my voice and I'm like, oh snap, that's different. It's very different than how it is now. It's really nice. One of the very, again, the, all of these are like upfront things that I noticed. So one of the very first things as well that I noticed was I didn't fit into any of my clothes anymore, which was awesome. Spectacular. Gave, like, up until starting testosterone, I was still shopping for my clothes in the boys section because they didn't make pants small enough for me in men's. But now I actually fit into a 30-30 pair of pants, which is really cool, really cool, I feel awesome about that, and so it gave me an excuse to buy new jeans, and I made a video about that, um, you guys saw that video already during Vlogmas, that was really awesome, and I still consistently, like it wasn't just water weight, I still consistently wear and fit into those pants and shirts, I filled them out better with my shoulders, and before the virus turned off all essential, all non-essential businesses, I actually was going to the gym consistently, so I did actually have quite a bit of um, muscle growth in these areas as well. And uh, another thing, my stamina has significantly increased. However, there are things that used to be not difficult that are difficult now, and things that used to be incredibly difficult that are not difficult. So thing number one that used to be not difficult that feels more difficult now is core exercises. Those used to be something that I was very good at doing, and I'm still good at doing them, but they take more effort, and I can do less of them. Things like running, which used to be nearly impossible, I can do really well now. Like, I can run a mile in eight and a half minutes, which was something I used to have to work for, but I didn't run for a month and a half, and I was still able to, to make that time without really con like trying too hard. So that, that's something that's been really interesting. My feet haven't grown, my height hasn't changed. So for those of you starting testosterone after your teen and puberty years, just know that your those things are not gonna change. I knew they wouldn't, but I still harbored like a secret hope that I would maybe like get just a little bit taller. But that's not super important, right, in passing as long as you look and sound masculine enough and, and how you carry yourself. You don't really have to worry about being misgendered. I started getting confused looks and people not mamming me as much around month two. Now, um, I don't really get mammed as much as long as I am on top of how I carry myself. I'm trying to think, the last time I got mammed was over a month ago, so. To be fair, I've not really left the house because of the pandemic, but also can talk on the phone and people either aren't sure or do sir me, which is really cool. Acne has been redonkulous. Um, I'm gonna be changing body soaps because I think that's part of it. So my face acne got really, really, really bad. I don't know if you guys can see too well here. Uh, the first couple of months. And my doctor, Raj Singh, actually um, has an esthetician on staff who was able to give me some face wash and face creams that have really helped um, balance the, the pH and all the insanity going on in my face. Um, however, and you guys can see this pretty consistently, 
it is all up my arms and my back and not as bad on my chest but it is it is pretty much everywhere on my torso and so if I I'm thinking if I change my body soaps to something that isn't Old Spice or or heavily fragrance that will sort of start to resolve itself. I do want to actually provide body measurements here shortly because I know I made a body measuring video in 2017 that I really want to do like a comparison video but that's gonna be a separate video from this one so just a heads up on that coming soon. It would help if I wear my glasses. Facial structure, voice, measurement, stamina, bottom growth, acne, facial hair. Ah! Ah! Some things that you don't expect to change do change. I don't know if other guys on T have experienced this but Sneezes are different. I know that sounds weird, but okay, check this out. So, before I was on testosterone, I would feel like I needed to sneeze, and then I would sneeze. And it was easy. It was painful, because sneezing hurts, but it was easy. Now, I feel like I need to sneeze, I almost sneeze, and then I have to wait like an hour and a half for the sneeze to actually happen. And the only difference that I've noticed is the testosterone. Thing number two is acid reflux. I now get that, and I'm I've never been able to burp, like I'm physically incapable of burping, so it just kind of sits there and hurts a little bit and there's not really like a relief for it outside of like antacids. So those are two things that I noticed that I would consider as side effects that were not expected. Also I, um, my hands got thicker so I don't fit into my old wedding ring, not that I want to anyway, but so that is something if you are a trans guy and you are married and you have a wedding band just know that you're, you will get like more meaty, muscular, I guess, hands. So um, you'll want to take off your wedding ring at a certain point and get it resized because that could be potentially dangerous. Something that I thought was probably placebo for other trans men until I experienced it is um, mood, emotions, right? So prior to starting testosterone, I would describe my emotional range as very... Uh, there's a lot of it, and it's all very intense. I didn't really have a lot of in-between emotions, and I had a really hard idea, hard way, bleh. It was very extreme. It was either I was joyous, or I was depressed, or I was numb. There wasn't really, like, an in-between, and also I would get, like, a jumble of emotions and not really be able to identify distinct ones, just knowing that I was feeling a lot of everything all at once. With testosterone, my emotional range is more like this which is awesome because I feel a lot more in control of how I feel and a lot more aware. I'm able to identify I'm feeling this because this. It's like I'm able to actually figure out what I'm feeling and why and if I need to process something I can actually process it. The downside to this, this is what I thought was placebo for other trans guys until I experienced it myself, is actually the inability to cry. It's, it's super fascinating. I feel the feeling of being immensely sad, and regardless of if there's a reason or not, because sometimes there's not a reason, but lately there's been reasons because of the pandemic and people are dying and the world is upset, and that makes me very sad. I feel that. I feel sad about it. That is something that would have had me crying consistently, like for days, that I can just barely get misty about now and I can't actually like like cry. Another example, we watched the movie Onward as a family. Man, brothers bonding, right? And the older brother having been like the parent for the younger brother, that's not really a spoiler because the dad is dead, right? Um, that's the whole premise of the movie. That is something that hit me, it really hit home, it really hit me hard because of my own dynamic with my brother and um, those feelings involved with that and I would normally have been bawling at that but I could I could only get like kind of misty. I don't feel aggressive. I know that a lot of people are like, oh testosterone makes you angry and violent and like, no, it really doesn't. I lived a lot of my life being incredibly angry and I don't feel that in the slightest so Yes, so I'm feeling incredibly fulfilled. Last but not least, a change that I've experienced that I'm just gonna, I'm gonna come right up here for you guys so you can see is the facial hair, right? So I actually have stuff growing on my face and I wanted to show you guys this video because 
um, I do have plans to shave it off today. As as cool as it is, and as it does kind of give a masculine identifier, um, it gets in my nose. <sighs> like it's long enough to like end up in my nostrils sometimes, and it's that's a little bit um, irritating. So yeah, that's that's it really. Those are the changes. That's everything that I've been going through this past couple of months, and I really have missed you guys. It's been a weird ride. I, I don't plan on stopping my YouTube videos now that I'm finally settled in and getting comfortable again and sort of being able to, to be cool with myself again and having two amazing loving partners that I get to spend my days with even in quarantine. It's just, it's it's been really good. Um, I guess a final note is that I still am actually working at the Chicken Ranch Brothel, which is spectacular. I love them. They are really being respectful and treating me like um, a human being. I didn't expect tea to have the effects that it did as immediately as it did. So I told them when I started testosterone that I wanted to, after six months, um, transition publicly to being a, a um, trans masculine provider, but the changes happened quick enough that we had to shift the timeline on that pretty quick. So they've, they've been working on accommodating myself and other trans people. The brothel, like every non-essential business in Nevada, is currently closed. So it's not something that we've really been able to exercise too much, but they're making the, the changes, which is great. My best friend Cal and I started a sticker company. I know. Oh, it's awesome. So we actually decided to start making stickers for things like the Happy Planner, Erin Condren Planner, those daily planners that you get um, off the internet that allow you to sort of like plan out your, your month, your week, your day. And it's super useful for people like us who kind of need and like to have a plan. Anyway. I'm going to put links to everything that I talked about in the description and I know this was kind of a rambly video but I really wanted to update you on everything that's been going on. There's more, there's so much more and I can't wait to share it all with you guys um, including things like how to change your gender marker on your ID in Nevada, super freaking easy, my name change which is currently in process um, and, and tons of other things. So thank you guys for being awesome. I hope you're having a good day. I know that quarantine is difficult. I know it's hard not to leave the house to get Starbucks every single day. You can use this as a time to recenter yourself, drink more water, and adopt healthy habits such as washing your hands consistently and telling your loved ones that you care. If you like what you saw today and you want to see more, hit that button down below, subscribe, become a member of the Jackalope Tribes, tribe? Become a member of the Jackalope Tribe and earn your antlers, and don't forget to follow me on Instagram. I have other social media links. I'm just still deciding whether or not I actually want to share them with you guys, because to be completely honest, I have like a trillion different social media profiles. I really just want you to follow my cat on Instagram. Her name is Juniper, um, and the handle is at Juniper underscore Vegas. Anyway, peace out, homeschool at Biscuits. What are you doing to occupy your time during this time of quarantine? Put it in the comments down below, and tell me how your journey is going. Peace out insane right now, the amount of hair that I have on my head, because, um, again, everything is closed. But I'm considering doing something different and wild and exciting with my hair when all of this does resolve. And we've still got about um, three and a half weeks left in quarantine here in Nevada as of today, the 6th of April. 